Hello and welcome to another episode of Archery Releases Ad Nauseum. Today I'm going to examine the Executive Hinge by Trueball, released in early 2022. The Executive was made in consultation with Chris Perkins, who is apparently a pro archer of some sort. I don't really follow the pro archery circuit, so the name that's associated with the release is not as important to me as the features, the design, and how it performs in the hands of the public. If a pro archer has design input on a release, then great, but I hear the best concert violinists can't build a violin either. If you know the book from which I got that little snippet or reference, let me know in the comments. Anyway, the executive was released at ATA in January 2022. I ordered mine when Lancaster put it up for pre-sale first. I actually received it on April 13th. Trueball is slated to be six months behind on production, so I'm going to count my blessings that I only had to wait four and a half months for it. Once again, companies releasing things at ATA without actually having any in stock to sell them. I don't get it, but I guess there's a reason for it. The two selling points for this release is a micro-adjustable sear with an independently adjustable click, and a neck and head that is height adjustable, the first of its kind. The tagline is, find your perfect draw length and to keep the draw length perfect when changing from D-loop to D-loop. I'm going to save my opinion on that for later, uh, and we'll go over into the light box. So the handle is made of brass with a quicksilver finish and a red machined aluminum jaw. Uh, this is currently the only configuration that it is currently available. On a side note, every time I look at this thing, I cannot help but thinking it resembles a Muscovy duck. You know, those, those white ducks with the red cancer around their bills? There, try to unsee that. Anyway, I digress. Sizing is considered medium, though they are marketing it as a one-size-fits-most, since you can extend the neck to make it feel larger. I wear size small gloves, and the finger beds fit my short stubby fingers in a slightly roomy but well enough fashion. Now if I line everything up on a with a Trueball HBC Flex in medium, the size of the finger beds are identical with the, um, the Flex Flex's extension fully retracted. So everything pretty much lines up right away, including the hook. So you're looking at something that's pretty much the exact same size for the most part as an HBC Flex Medium. Um, with regards to sizing, uh, a short word from my sponsor, me. If you're unsure if the sizing on a release will work for you, please check out my website at artandarchery.com where you can find a sizing guide with printable PDFs of every release I own. And I have a sheet with the executive in, with the head in the fully extended, midpoint, and fully retracted settings. My collection of PDFs currently sits at 109 files covering every U.S. release brand and will continue to grow with your support, either through tips or by patronizing my holster and quiver business. And with that, let's continue. All right, so handle and ergonomics. The index finger bed on the executive is smooth, and the middle and ring fingers are checkered uh, for additional grip. It's pretty smooth, but there is a little bit of grab there when you notice at full draw. This is something that so far only Trueball does, and I'm hoping more companies start adding textures to their finger beds so archers don't have to rely on grip or skateboard tape to avoid slippage. As of the completion of this video, the only size it comes in is three finger medium solid handle. It also comes with a black small thumb peg and has three positions on the handle in which uh, to screw it a la the HT and HBC series. It is likely there will be a flex model in the future since that's what Trueball does to all their releases these days. And I think they mentioned that it'll be in the works eventually when they decide if this is worth continuing to develop. The handle has a slight sweep uh, in the ring finger and tapers slightly starting at the base of the neck. The hinge also uh, kind of steps back one generation of hinges by not having a hook at the end of the last uh, finger bed. So it's very much like an HT, almost like they took the CAD files from the HT and beefed it up in places to support the adjustable head. The finger beds are wide with a wide flat center and nicely round edges. 
the flats on the middle and ring finger actually look a little wider than the index finger for some reason. This flat is thicker than this one. The release itself is uh, pretty heavy for a uh, release in general, weighing in at 5.7 inches. 5.7 ounces. When you grip the executive, it has kind of a generic feel to it, and it actually feels kind of blocky compared to its cousin, the HPC Flex Medium, which has roughly the same size and width of finger beds. However, the HPC's finger beds are more rounded off with thinner flats in the center than the executive. The executive also has knurling on the middle and ring finger beds, whereas the HPC only has it on the uh, ring finger or on the flex finger extension if you decide to go four fingers. The resting position of the jaw is nearly perpendicular to the neck. Uh, the hook lines up um, with the neck and sits right in between the middle and index fingers. So whatever angle you like to draw your hinges, you should be able to get a sear and click setting that accommodates it. It also makes manipulating it very easy because one, you can't draw it with it pinned against the top of the neck. It's just not angled for that. And it responds well to lateral movements, such as when you squeeze your shoulder blades together and your elbow moves uh, both rearward and behind your body. Or at least mine does when I'm actually using back tension the way I'm supposed to. I'm also learning as I acquire more and more hinges that if you have a preference for how you like to angle the release and how much index and thumb you like to use on the draw, the geometry of the neck and the position of the jaw and head will determine how easy it will be for you to use it. The um, closer they are to the center point between your index and middle finger, the less rotation is needed to lift the head and release the hook. So far, the only hinges um, or releases I have trouble with at the moment are the uh, UV Hinge Original and the 2.0, which are technically the main competitors to the Executive, or the 2.0 is anyway. This is because the head on the UltraView is situated over the middle finger more so, and requires even pressure um, all across all your fingers and very little thumb on the draw. Um, I don't have the same issues with the executive as I do with the UltraView hinges due to the straightness of the neck, uh, the starting position of the head, as well as how it responds to a shot process that uses actual back tension. So it's a lot easier for me to use this than it is for the UltraView hinge. All right, so here's where I start to have some issues. It takes a 35 thousandth inch hex key to unlock the click and adjust its position, a 50 thousandths key to unlock the sear and the adjustable neck, and a 5 64th inch key to adjust the sear and adjust the length of the neck. They're supposed to be included, but there wasn't a 564th in the package. It was just the 50,000s and the 35,000s. So no big deal. I EDC a folding wrench. Now I understand that the neck adjustment needs to be a larger tool because it's a big screw in there. But when you have control over every other piece of production and machine every part in the house, why not standardize as many screws and bolts on these things as you can? Additionally, why would they put a screw on this that uses a hex key size that isn't included in any folding key set, let alone the ones everyone carries? 35 thousandths is not in any of them. I looked. Why not just make the parts a few thousandths thicker and stick a grub screw in there that takes a 50 thousandth, and then you don't have to include another oddball wrench in your packaging? while apparently excluding another one because I'm not the only one that didn't have a 564th inch uh, hex key included in the packaging. Now I don't plan on adjusting the click very often, so I can probably do without carrying or sourcing more of the 35,000th keys when I invariably misplace this one. I know I'm going to lose it sooner or later. However, I do believe manufacturers should make it easy to adjust uh, their releases as often as the Archer wants and should use screws that accept tools that are easy to acquire. I should be able to just whip out my tools and then adjust this anytime I want. Unfortunately, that's not the only issue um, I have at this point with this release. In an age where companies make efforts to make D-loop hookup easier by way of return springs, magnets, or even rubber bands, the hook on this $265 release has none of those and just flops loosely. 
if my hex key criticism might be bordering on a nitpick, this is actually quite disappointing. I was really disappointed when I saw that. So for a hinge of this price point, this was a huge misstep, um, as there are less expensive hinges on the market with hook retention, and Trueball already has some, like the HT and the HBC, that keep the hook at the ready position. They don't have a magnet in there, but since the neck, or rather the head, is spring-loaded, that just makes it, you know, that keeps this where it needs to be, so you don't have to fiddle with it in between ends, or in between arrows, rather. Between that and the lack of, I don't know if you noticed, but no lanyard attachment point, this is definitely geared towards target archers, and I seriously doubt Trueball expects anyone to take this out hunting. There are other ways to carry it, of course, and keep it, you know, keep it in a ready position that isn't a release pouch, and I'll plug my own website uh, later. So let's go over the most important, well, rather the most unique part of this release. The neck adjustment on the executive can set the hook from roughly the same position as a HBC when fully seated to an extra quarter inch, which makes it longer and stick out further than any other hinge, including the UltraView hinges, which are also on the longer side. It's worth noting that there is a stopper of some sort that keeps the head from falling out if you try to extend it um, as far as you can. I've experimented with uh, different neck lengths on it to see what it does to feel... Um, on the draw and the shot execution. And for me, the longer you have it out, the more it wants to straighten out before you get to full draw. When it's fully retracted, it feels perfectly normal because it's the same size as an HBC. So if you want to play with it being sticking out further, then uh, you might have to set your sear a little bit colder. Um, so what it's supposed to do is allow you to tweak your anchor point uh, the package says adjust your draw length, um, but you don't do that at your release, you do that on your bow, as anyone who spends any time on archery talk will attest. In the event, um, it allows you to adjust that uh, in the event that things aren't lining up correctly or on your contact points at full draw, or if you put a D-loop on that's a different length than the ones you had before. Now, I'm not a pro archer, but I do know the length I need to cut my D-loop cord, um, I have it written down somewhere, and I've never said to myself, or thought to myself, I wish the head of this release was longer. Definitely uh, wished it was shorter for some things. Usually I'll tweak other things like my draw length or D-loop length to get the same result, um, but for the most part, um, the releases I like, I I've never had one that I've needed to be longer, I've always needed ones to be shorter. I can understand that it adds an extra tool to the arsenal for getting things set up perfectly, but I also think most people are just going to set it to one point and then never move it again. Um, for example, when I was... I went to a 3D shoot this morning, and I took this out and I shot it in its fully extended position, and the way I draw the bow, I tend to have it sitting like that, which puts my middle finger right sitting on top of this interface right here. And with the head extended out, uh, my finger was digging in, or at least, or rather the release, uh, the edges on this and the edges on this were digging into my finger. So it was more uncomfortable um, for me in that configuration, as well as having different leverages that I'm not used to. So I pretty much just ended up retracting this fully, and then that's just where I'm going to leave it. So, so it's... That function is more or less useful, useless to me. Not very useful and useless. So in my opinion, um, it's really a solution in search of a problem. I don't think the general public is really going to get the full usage out of this. And if you maybe use it to pair it with a thumb release of some sort, then I think you're going to find that it being in this position is probably where you want it because most thumb releases are going to be shorter than this to begin with. So um, so take that with, with what you will. You might actually be able to use this by just ditching your D-loop entirely and just hooking it up to the string, in which case you could make this really long. Um, but like I said, I think it's a solution in search of a problem.
In the future, I wouldn't mind actually seeing this type of head with the same geometry um, in a handle with no adjustable head, uh, have the same height as it is uh, fully retracted, put a flex finger on it, and then a spring or magnet under this hook to keep uh, from having to reset it manually. I think that would actually be a much bigger crowd pleaser than um, than this current setup. That being said, I did you know I did actually enjoy shooting it once I had it in the fully retracted position to where I was used to. Um, your mileage may vary, but um, for me, just the angle of this head being so aggressive here made it a lot easier for me, um, who draws with a lot of thumb and index finger like this. To, uh, to kind of bring it around and then give it just a little extra nudge of back tension to get it to, um, to go off. So I actually, I didn't think I was going to like it, but I actually liked it better than I expected. So the main competitors that the executive is competing against is the Carter Envy, Total Control, Carter slash Knock On Too Smooth, the Scott Ascent, and the Ultraview 2.0 hinge. Um, all of these have independently adjustable clicks and sears. The um, Ultraview hinge 2.0 is the only one of the group that has interchangeable finger extensions, and um, the rest of them are solid handled in different versions, configurations, handle shapes, um, and sizes. Uh, the Executive is the only one of this group that does not have a system for securing the hook. All of the Carters have magnets, the Ultraview Hinge 2.0 has a magnet, and the Ascent has a rubber band, which is not ideal, but still, it, you know, it gets the job done. Uh, the Ascent and the Carters are, you know, the closest equivalent uh, since they are solid handled, um, but it also means that they can be had for about $65 less. I think the uh, Carter Two Smooths went up to two hundred and thirty dollars now, so you're looking at a forty dollar difference. But the Carters are usually around two hundred bucks. The Ascent is around two hundred dollars. The Ultraview Hinge is two seventy, two fifty or two seventy, something like that. Um, I got mine on sale. Uh, so, so yeah, you're looking at a. Not a crowded market, but it's a good amount of uh, competition, and it's really a matter of deciding which one fits your hand best and um, your method of shot execution. Um, like I said, if you're not sure, uh, every one of these has a sheet, a printable sheet on my website, so feel free to check them out. They're also free to download, and um, yeah, so you see whichever one works best for you or what lines up best with the release that you're currently using. So I think that about covers it. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, please uh, like, share, and subscribe. If you want a unique way to carry your releases or arrows, please check out my Etsy shop or my website. Thanks for watching. Take care, stay safe, and happy hunting.